many companies start with a standard three-tier application architecture. Here you have a representation layer for your clients. This could be a web clients or mobile clients. Then there is a logic tier with your in-house built application deployed on the server. Finally, there is a data tier with a database where you store all your customer data. Typically, you don't invest in automation from the start. That's because it's hard to tell whether the project will be a success. So you do everything by hand. You configure the database by SSHing to the server and creating the schemas and tables. Then you SSH to your server to install your application. Also, every time when you add a new feature or fix a bug, you need to SSH and update the application running on your server. As time goes on and you attract more and more customers, you need to provision more and more servers to handle increased demand. Now, updating the application on each server one by one becomes a tedious task. It takes a lot of time and there is a good chance you could make a mistake while doing this repetitive task. Now, you need a tool that can do it automatically for you. One of the best configuration management tools out there is Ansible. Every single task you do by hand can be automated using built-in modules. Many of these tasks can be combined into Ansible playbook. Additionally, it has inventory file that can be static, containing a list of IP addresses, or dynamic, retrieving those IP addresses dynamically from the cloud using labels and tags. If we go back to the previous example, you can argue that if your application is stateless, the best approach would be to build immutable architecture using tools like Packer and Terraform. Especially in the cloud, you can create templates and use autoscaling groups. But let me explain where Ansible really shines. As a company grows, you have to figure out how to serve ever-growing customer base. You begin to use distributed systems such as Cassandra database or Kafka messaging system. And there are many other examples. Where Ansible really shines compared to Terraform and Packer is creating and especially maintaining stateful distributed applications, which is sometimes called day two operations. If you need to update a single parameter in Kafka and restart the instance, you're not going to build a new image and update all your Kafka instances with new images. You may even need to perform a rolling upgrade. For instance, if you have to upgrade Kafka to a new version, rolling upgrade is necessary. However, it's not only that. After upgrading one node in the cluster, you need to test that your cluster is healthy before you can proceed to the next node. This is simply not possible with Terraform. You can integrate Terraform with Ansible, but Ansible would only run once when you create an instance. And Ansible will have a single entry in its inventory file. So it's impossible to perform a managed rolling upgrade of the stateful application using Terraform Ansible integration. Again, both tools are the best in their specific areas. Ansible is great for managing distributed stateful applications that cannot be simply replaced by new images. And Terraform is great for managing cloud infrastructure and managing stateless applications. But when it comes to stateful databases, Terraform falls short. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.